Hi there, this is Gia Freer from Palm Beach Premier Real Estate. So now you've decided to short sell your home and you don't know what you're going to need or what's expected. So what comes next? Let me give you a short sale overview of the process and how it actually works. All right, to set yourself up for short sale success and not short sale hell, here are some of the items that you will need in order to successfully complete a short sale and hopefully get the deficiency judgment released. First, you need to get a short sale realtor. Not all realtors or real estate professionals are created equal. There are some fantastic agents out there that do not do short sales, and even they will admit that you need to get a short sale realtor that knows the process and does this type of niche sale to be successful. Second, get your documentation in order. You will need to prepare a hardship letter. Now, some folks have asked if a divorce is considered a hardship. Well, most people would say yes. If you're asking the lender, however, they would say no way because they assume that the provisions have already been made and are in order at the time that the divorce decision was made. An example of a hardship is, for example, a job loss, major medical issues, death of a loved one that was an earner in the home. In addition to the hardship letter, you will definitely need uh, your tax returns for the last two years, bank statements and pay stubs for the last two months, a personal financial statement which lists your assets, your liability, and your monthly expenses. You will also need to give the attorney or person negotiating on your behalf the last four digits of your social security number and the mortgage statement which shows the name and account number of the lender. You will also need to sign an authorization letter so that the negotiator will be able to speak to your lender on your behalf. Your Realtor will provide to your negotiator a copy of the listing agreement, sales contract, pre-qualification letter for the buyer, and a comparative market analysis on your property and all contact information for the buyer, the buyer's agent, you, and your agent. The attorney and or title company will provide to the lender a copy of a preliminary closing statement showing an approximation of closing costs so that the lender can see the entire picture and make a decision on your file. The lender will then order something called a BPO. That is a broker's price opinion. This is where a third party broker who is not a party to the short sale transaction goes to your home, sometimes just as a drive by inspection, and gives your lender an opinion of what they believe your home is worth. On a drive-by inspection, they do not consider the interior upgrades or condition as they're not entering the home. Your Realtor must be familiar with these BPOs as sometimes it's necessary to strongly oppose or clarify with your lender that the BPO value may be off. Our office in conjunction with an attorney who was negotiating on behalf of our seller had an instance with a major lending institution, Chase Bank, where the negotiator at the bank actually told us they knew our area in Boca Raton better than we did. Their offices were in Texas. I made it clear to the lender that we were certified BPO providers and that there was no way that they had a clue about our area. After a bit of back and forth, we were able to successfully negotiate $75,000 off their demands with a full deficiency judgment release and close the transaction to the satisfaction of both the buyer and the seller. You need to have an experienced agent on your team. If you're thinking of short selling your home, give the short sale experts at Palm Beach Premier Real Estate a call at 561-395-8418 or email us at info at palmbeachpremierrealestate.com. This is Gia Freer from Palm Beach Premier Real Estate. Thank you so much for watching.